So we're down to our local market once again, Exodoy. Um, very different vibe. Uh, so you've seen it here in the summertime and it's absolutely hopping and it's absolutely enormous. Um, this is very much more local. This is this is the local people coming to get their their weekly produce and um, uh, you know those sorts of goods. So let's show you around our market in the fall. Our nearby town of Tivier won the Best Market in Dordogne Award this year, so we popped out there on Saturday to show our guests too. All right, we are at Bertillac again. You know, our, our, it's a bit of a kryptonite for us, I think, yep. once a month. But amazing place, and uh, this time we've decided, or I guess I've decided, on two lovely vases from mid-century, yeah. uh, 20th century. Absolutely stunning, double double walled uh, yeah. glass pieces, hand blown. Hand blown. Yep. But the color is absolutely gorgeous, and I think they're going to go really nicely in, in the chateau. Lovely height. Yeah. I was sorely tempted by this little piche as well. Voilà. Est-ce que vous, vous, vous voulez un ticket? Look how pretty she is. She comes in teal. <gasps> and she's got such a cute little case. Last minute walking back Merci to the beaucoup. car. Merci. We have found a lampadaire. <laughs> It is friggin' all on today. We've had the heating guys, which I have been chasing for mm, a, year, a year, finally yeah. came back and did the fixes we wanted. Um, and then Steve's thing that he went out and ordered yesterday. Yeah, I finally have a ladder <laughs> that is tall enough to be able to get up to our ceilings. <laughs> it seems a bit ridiculous, but we do have almost four meter ceilings on both the, the main floor and the first floor. So we needed something to be able to get up to the, to the top. I did buy a ladder uh, when we first moved in and I, it's not good. It's, it, no. it's just rickety. It's and good it, for, for up to a certain height, but we need something so we can get up nice and high. And yeah, a good go. solid painter's platform as well, so. Yeah, something that has a bigger, bigger step to it because yeah. you know, if you're gonna hang out on a ladder for, you know, an hour or so painting, whatever it is, you definitely want to be comfortable, so. Absolutely. There you go. We now have, let's see. Oh yeah, much more comfortable. Almost touch. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't necessarily, unfortunately, have your dad chasing us around the Christmas tree this year? No. Oh, that'd be no. too bad. I think we'll be Still okay. welcome, Phil. Come anyways. Yeah. All there right. There we go. I guess that means we're going to have to get on with things. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I am because I know you. You're not getting up on this thing, are you? I might. I might be able to conquer my fear of ladders again. I did it once. Maybe I can do it again. Well, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. It feels pretty pretty stable, so. Well, maybe you should film me while I get courageous. What do you think? <laughs> if you want to give it a shot. All right. All right. You're going to do it? I'm going to do it. So the background to this is I saw my dad fall off a ladder when I was little and ladders have been really quite phobic for me ever since. So um, shout out to my former housemates who had to put up with this. Um, two rungs is fine. Yeah. Three rungs was pretty trepidatious on the other ladder. That was definitely my max before yeah. I really started freaking out. But this one does feel better. Feels more solid. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm on four. Yay. This is, for those who know me, a really big deal. There you go, confirmation. Whew, goodness. 
Could I do one more? Maybe if you held the other side, I could do one more? Sure, I will, I will hold the other side as steady as I can. Oh, this is super terrifying. I'm on five, honey. This is a big deal. Look, I could get, I could do a lot with this. Yeah. I could actually contribute a lot because I actually probably could get used to this fairly quickly. It feels fairly solid, so. Good. Thanks, Echelles. <laughs> Echelle European, is that where we got this? Echelle European, yeah. All right, literally yeah. the European ladder store, so. Yeah. Now I get to come down and that's, that's the best part. <laughs> Here's the ultimate test. And this, this falls under Chateau problems because this is literally the tallest they have before you have to get into scaffolding. The nice thing is because there's, there's a unit like this goes above the steps, you feel like you've got something to hang on to. There's actually a tray up there, which is great. Yeah. And I can touch the ceiling, which is Okay. Key. So that means that we will, in fact, be able to switch out the lamp to the beautiful one that Elska and Maurice got us, which exactly. is very exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a couple more steps to go, ironically, <laughs> pun intended, before we could do that. Yeah. Yay! Things are happening. Well, it is absolutely stunning light that was lovingly purchased for us by uh, Elska and Mo as a gift. We're going to try and get it up in this room. So, wish me luck. Take me old one down. We're going to try and hook this one on, and then I'll try and wire it up. Um, do I keep vlogging or can I actually help in some useful way? At the moment, I'm just going to hook this thing on. So. We're just discussing height and how far we want it off the table. And I think the standard is 36 inches, though that always feels low to me. It will be centered over the table most of the time. Like we don't usually take the table out of here, right? Sure. So. I think it can be a little bit lower than, we don't have to worry about people walking under it as much. No, I mean, this height at least gets you to see the beautiful painting on the enamel. Yeah. I mean, you've got to remember there's a glass dome, as dome well. there, right? So. 36 inches is three feet, which is 90 centimeters. So that is 31 centimeters, uh, sorry, okay. sorry, 31 inches, uh, 32 inches off. Okay, so, so if we low. could go up a bit. How does that feel? Yeah, I think that feels a bit better. Just trying to figure out how everything is hooked in here. I saw the baguette move once you took the, you said it was a split pin out? Yeah, well, the whole thing was being supported by a single split pin, and that worries me. The entire weight of the lamp was being held on by a split pin. It's, it's I mean, it's gonna hold, but it concerns me a little that. That feels pretty dodgy to me. Well, considering you've got a pretty significant ring here so if i pull this through then i can hook this ring onto the hook up there um and then wire it so the whole thing will be on that mm. ring versus a split pin right which makes me feel a little happier we have uh, monsieur otier here just to make sure everything's okay he's our Bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> so he's our very helpful electrician who lives locally and he's done great work for us. So, merci, monsieur. We just want to make sure everything's correctly hooked up because we're still getting used to the French system and the dominoes and whatnot, and it's an old house. So, yeah, I, I feel very inadequate that I can't do electricity because I used to do it in, in Canada all the time. Switch yeah, things, but it's different here, right? It's we different just and it's older and you just want to color coordinated <laughs> <laughs> and safety first, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The light is on. The light is on. Yay. It's a bit close to Newcastle doing this in the morning light, but look at that. 
Oh, see. it's so beautiful. Look at it. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous. <gasps> I love this light. Oh. Holding. <laughs> Cannot wait to redecorate the whole room around this. Yeah. So excited. Yeah, it's so, so pretty. Beautiful. I love it with the cap. We'd love you guys to be involved in the decoration, so please leave us a comment about what you think about this wallpaper. It was recommended to us by a friend and we really like it and we really like the color palette and we think it blends well with the lamp. That illustration set is actually available on Adobe Stock. Steve knew it from some of the other work he's done for another customer, so we're really curious what you guys think. In the meantime, some of you will remember an upholstery project we did a while ago where we picked some material originally and then decided to go a different direction. Well, look what I found on a Paris designer's account this week. I'm back outside in front of the chateau. Um, I decided to do a little bit more drawing. And after last week, uh, we had some fantastic comments come in and there was a few people that inquired about the technique that I used to draw. Um, so I thought I'd give just a quick um, tutorial or show um, how I actually do my drawings. Uh, so let me first quick, quickly just sort of take you through the tools that I use to, to, to make my sketches. So I tend to draw with a uh, fine liner pen to begin with. Um, I have them in a couple of different shades and different sizes. These ones are Windsor and Newton, which I really like. Um, they work extremely well. Um, and it's really just so that I can get the base of the sketch down. That's what I usually start to, to create the drawing with. And then I use all of these wonderful markers or pens um, that come from Stadler. So these are Stadler or Stadler. I never quite remember how, they're, uh, how it's actually supposed to be pronounced. But the nice thing about these pens is they're double-ended. So they've got a really big end and then they've got a, a much finer end on the other side. So it gives me that option to be able to lay down a lot of color if I need to, or um, more fine detail on it. And such a massive range of color in here, which is which is fantastic. It, it allows me to uh, make all sorts of tones. Next thing that I really need, uh, and this is my, my travel set, is actually paintbrushes. So these are fantastic. This is um, a set that I picked up years ago. And they just go together like that, and uh, nice little fine brushes. There's five different sizes um, that I have here from really fine to something a little bigger. And uh, that's all I need to create the watercolor effects. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm drawing with the pens and then I'm adding water with a brush to blend that color together and essentially smear it across the page in an orderly fashion to create the watercolor effect. So the other tricky bit or the other key component to this is, of course, the paper. Um, I used to use a lot of watercolor paper to do this. Um, obviously, you want to be able, want to have something that can hold water really well. The only problem is the more water you add to it, the more deformity that you get in the paper. So instead, um, I've recently discovered this unbelievable company uh, called Karst Stone Paper. And, it's, and what it is is actually paper made from stone. And it's essentially, because it's made from stone, it's almost impermeable. Um, it allows me to, to draw, it's extremely smooth paper, so it allows me to draw perfect lines, um, and then I can add the color and the, and the water as, as at will, and it won't go through this paper at all. It's absolutely amazing for that. Um, you know, the, I'm not quite sure how Karst does it. I think it's a bit of magic that they managed to find but it is unbelievably good paper. And I think it's definitely gonna be something that I'm gonna use uh, going forward to make these kind of sketches. And the great thing is they make nice little compact sketchbooks, so um, I can take it with me wherever I go. And then the last thing, of course, is water. Um, and it's just regular water, but any water source will work. And that's just to allow you to blend it uh, in the watercolor effect. So there's the materials. Let me get sketching and I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to do a relatively quick sketch of the tower on our chateau. It all comes down to proportions. And that's when um, starting with something relatively light, like this pen actually has um, more of a gray ink as opposed to a black ink. And this allows me to quickly sort of sketch in just to make sure that my proportions are correct before I start getting deep into details. 
So let me just start here. That at least gives me um, a, a quick start to to work with. Then I can get into working with the colors. So, for example, um, on our the tiles on our roof are slate, but they have a slight blueness to them. So I want to add a little bit of blue to it. And this is where sort of the magic of the watercolor effect comes in. So right now, there's, you know, I'm seeing a bit of dimension. The colors are a bit darker at the back and a bit lighter at the front. So adding just a little bit of color along the edge there. I'm actually going to add just a little bit of blue to that as well. And then you take the paintbrush, dip it in a little bit of water, and you can start then working with it. So of course it will thin out as as you utilize it. If you add a little bit more water, it thins it a bit more. And you get this watercolor effect. So it allows me to create shadow and dimension in my drawings and obviously add a bit of color to it. And right now I'm finding it it's a little too light, so one thing I do like to do is add a little bit of black and it just dirties the color a little bit. But you, you know, you sort of have to be strategic. It's like, okay, where is it darker? You know, where, where are the areas that you want to add some darkness to it? And because of this paper working very, very quickly, it, you know, it dries quite quickly and it allows me to be very accurate with the the color. So what I like to do is sort of block in the color a little bit first and then uh, and then I'll go back over it with a pen again and and fill in some details. I think for me the uh, the reason why I sort of started doing this in the first place I have tried watercolor um, and you know all the respect in the world to those who do it well it is, it's a difficult medium to control to a certain extent. Um, this allows me to have the control of a pen and then also add uh, a bit of dimension and a bit of color to it. And that I think works extremely well for me. And of course, everybody needs to find the, uh, the technique that works the best for them. And I'm really trying not to sound like Bob Ross, but for some reason, <laughs> there's a bit of Bob Ross coming out in my voice. So maybe I will put a happy little tree in at some point. The color of our chateau is this wonderful, warm, yellowy brick. And you know, I don't have that exact color in my palette. So the trick is I have to actually be able to uh, mix. So again, a little bit of water. I can use that black that's in there to create that effect. It allows you to really create the effect of dimension. There's a bit of cast shadow here from the roof. So because the tower, of course, is curved, I want to make sure that we, we get a sense of the shadow on the back here and feel like it's it's actually got some dimension to it. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, I'm going to keep working through this one and uh, playing around with the elements. But that gives you an idea at least of, of the technique that I use. So it's pens, it's brush and water, and you know, really quite simple. As I say, the paper has a lot to do with it. You can see this paper isn't warping at all. It's really super smooth. Um, and I can just keep adding water to it all day long and it, it works great. So, you know, hats off to Karst. They, they, they make a really, really good product. Working on a bit of the details and playing with it. And I think I've come up with something that I quite like. You know, as I say, it's not perfect. Um, it just gives a suggestion of the house on the side, but you know, you get that sense of scale and uh, presence of our tower. There you go, that's essentially how I create my work. Some of you were also kind enough to express an interest in purchasing some of Steve's artwork. So we're going to make some pages available up on our website and you can check it out on mannerandmaker.com. The skies over our chateau have been so beautiful this week and we've been out for some really lovely walks. I've been sharing the content on Instagram, but I thought I would share some of it here since a lot of you don't follow us there, which of course we'd recommend that you do. Thank you.